We're live. I guess we're live in. Good morning, everybody. We're coming to you live right here from inside the main built facility, Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. I'm Tom. The ladies' man is hot and hammered out. And the master's right here entering stage. It's going to be stage left this time, ladies and gentlemen. You know him. We love him. The master Bubba. Good morning, Bubba. How are we doing today? Doing good so far, man. We have a lot of stuff we're in the works on right now, and I'm trying to literally crush out four projects in the next on, two hours. Yeah, man. Tell us a little bit about what we got going on today, bud. So today we are now wrapping up on a brand new Ford Mustang GT. This thing has a lot of looks, a lot of performance, and a great sound to it. We just finished doing a lot of little custom odds and ends pieces to it just to take this thing and push it right over the top. And this client, I'm telling you right now, is blown away. How about that? This episode is brought to you by Bubba's Exotic Motorsports, ladies and gentlemen. That's Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. Dot com. Make sure you join our YouTube channel. Once you get to the website, you can shop there for all the latest in online apparel and accessories. The new BEM uh, retail shirts are up now, bub. You've got them for sale on uh, on the website, right? That's right. They're there. Twenty two ninety five. Get some twenty four ninety five. Twenty four ninety five plus shipping. Get some to you, right, bub? That's right. Hang on, man. Five six one. Let's see, yeah, 561-410-5527. Call us if you have a show topic idea. Hey, Bub, a lot going on here at Bubba's Exotic Motorsports, man. You got this gorgeous 2018 302 Mustang sitting here, man. Let's talk a little bit about that, man. So, you know, these things came out in 15, right? The S550 body style, and they came out as everything from a base model right off the showroom floor, 2.3 liter EcoBoost, which we all know what those numbers can pull easily touching that 550 600 horsepower mark <laughs> um, but they also come from a four-cylinder turbocharged to a v6 to also the v8 and going into even v8 supercharged packages as well these things are for what you're getting i would almost say best bang for your buck all around look style performance comfort handling braking system everything about them all these cars fall in that 28 to forty thousand dollar range so super, super, you know, efficient and affordable for every person at the end of the day. And let me tell you, the work you can do to these things, the performance upgrades you can do, it is absolutely endless. And every one of them is going to look completely different than another. Bob, let me touch on that. One of the things you've often said is the Chevrolet Corvette was the biggest bang you could possibly get for your buck, especially in comparison to some of the Euros and the exotics. Right. I'm hearing you now kind of move over, and you're not a Dodge guy, a Ford guy, uh, you're just a car guy, a right. motorcycle guy, a, a motorsports guy. So tell us a little bit about how, how does something like this compare to, say, a Corvette, a Camaro, so things like that. In, uh, you know, when I throw out those best bang for your buck things, I do it based off of price tags, right? So mm -hmm. in like the $35,000, $40,000 class, like this is probably one of those cars that you are going to get the most out of your money. Plus, it still leaves you plenty of room, if, you know, for example, buying like a base model GT. You're coming out of the gate with just over 400 horsepower. You can get these things and very quickly at a $35,000, $40,000 mark, you can dump 10 grand into it and you can have 650 rear wheel horsepower with no problem at all. And you'll have something that dominates and destroys an $80,000 Corvette. So ultimately, best bang for your buck when you compare, you know, $40,000, $50,000 range to 80,000, 90,000, 100,000. Then we've even gone as far as like the Porsche GT3s, the GT2s, yes. up in that 250, $300,000 range. So it's, you know, all around that price package and where you're trying to spend. So, Bub, one of the things that you've done with this particular vehicle, it's a great story behind this vehicle. This gentleman is an actual Ford dealership employee. Uh, we'll keep his anonymity. Uh, he's been with the same dealership going on almost 30 years now of yeah. service, Bub. He's very particular about who touches his vehicles and he brings it here, mm -hmm. okay? Which is an honor, man. We are honored to have that. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the upgrades that have been done to this car, but not only by us, by, but, but you know, let's talk a little bit about what's going on with this and what so, makes it different. You know, what's nice is, and this car looks the part, man. This thing not only sounds really strong, like I mentioned earlier, but it looks the part. It's very aggressive. It's got the Roush style decals on the side with the factory GT style lettering in them. So it all is exactly how it should. It's not being badged as something that it's not. It's not have a Roush badging on it. It's yep. really just, you know, a GT. So there's none of that going on here. It is a tastefully built and well-designed setup and package. Power performance wise, typical stage two setup, air intake assembly, cold air intake on the inside of the, or on the inlet side of the motor, full cap back exhaust on the exhaust side. So it's taking that air in, it's allowing that air to go out, custom tune, match to that to incre increase those fuel and timing tables with that increased airflow going in and out. This thing lays down a great amount of horsepower, great for a street car, pulls super strong, has that tone to it. 
and now you take that, that's about as far as the client wanted to go in terms of power package, which is nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's still that 450 horsepower mark in today's world is a comfortable and fun number, not something that you struggle with at all. How about that, Bub? Very good. Good morning to Jen Lloyd, your sister, who's up there in the Buffalo, New York area, Bub. She is watching. Good morning to Larry Williams, Set Aside Trim Shop. Larry, how you doing? I called you the other day. Give me a call, would you please, once we clear the air. Bub Lloyd's watching. Mike Galbraith says, good morning, Bub. He loves that color. Did you tell Mike you painted his car this color? Hey, we could do it. <laughs> uh, so I'll tell you what, you know what's funny, Mike, is actually this color is uh, considered Orange Fury from Ford. Now, on some of our past episodes, and we've done a lot of you know, technical stuff and conversations about paint quality, um, you know, the brands that we use typically PPG only. Um, in today's world, I've mentioned many times that Ford probably hands down holds the best in terms you of have. color availability and the clarity that you get in their paint off of showroom mass production yes, stuff. And that. that's not something really that most companies take pride in anymore. You know, GM, I've continued to shoot them down for a very long time and naturally I'm more of a GM guy, but their paint quality sucks, okay. even on their Escalades. Fair I mean, enough. you're buying the highest end out there, you're getting something full of orange peel. If you were to shoot something like this from GM, it would literally look like an orange peel, well, right? And but you, Ford has none of that problem. They, they don't. lay it out so, so smooth that even right off the showroom floor, you're not just getting a base coat, clear coat system. They've actually really stepped up their game like the SEMA 19 Mustang we're doing right now, they're using a lot of pearls, which is a base coat, it is a pearl that, top Bob. coat, and it is a clear coat. So for a mass production where you're trying to be quick and make the most profit, that is what these guys are doing in the industry, uh, you're not typically going outside of just a base coat, clear coat system. You're actually adding more into it. You're adding more cost in terms of the pearl top coats that are going on, plus more time to paint these things going down the assembly line. Now, it's only another three coats in between, but it is more time and it is more material that and all that actually it price. adds up definitely adds up times 10 cars right mm -hmm. well now times that by like a hundred thousand however many of these cars are making nowadays yeah man how about that Bub? good morning jeff graham josh brown start that thing up let's hear it bub that's up to you if you'd like hey, we to can start, start it and let it rip go ahead bub you can start it if well, you guys would like to hear it okay something. we'll start it josh Jesus. we will we will go out josh with the vehicle started for you absolutely we will do that for you but one of the things you mentioned i know there was a great running debate i'm sure in many ways there still is between the pony cars the chevrolet camaro and the ford mustang yeah there was reliability issues back in the day with ford's some of ford's quality control how do how do you compare that back in the 70s and 80s to today i mean is is there it's all, all it's all progress Google? man it's uh, everybody has progressed the standards have gotten so tight for every auto manufacturer and i'm talking everyone all the way across the board not just like domestic cars ford mm -hmm. gm things like that but all the way across the board even down to you know ferrari porsche higher end rides like that all of the standards in the industry have come up that much more in terms of performance reliability safety efficiency again price wise what you're actually paying for cost of goods all of that has gotten so tight and strict on standards that in today's world, I think it comes down to personal preference. You've got you know, the, the Mustang GTs in that thirty dollars to $40,000 range, depending on your packages. You've got the Chevrolet Camaro SSs, depending on that package, the 2SS, the 1SS, convertible, drive. Jesus Christ, there's like 45 yes. different options of these cars you can get, but all always in that same class. I mean, these things are always within the same couple points here and there of everything in terms of they're all coming four wheel disc brakes. Now, most auto manufacturers are utilizing Brembo brakes right out of the factory Isn't that crazy, bud? Um, you know, those used to be things that were like five and $10,000 upgrades for like the front kit plus the rear kit. It used to be something that five, 10 years ago was very expensive to do. If you had a C5 Corvette or a C4 Corvette, you wanted to upgrade the brakes. You had to dump 15 grand just to buy a big brake kit for the car. Now, they're all coming stock with big brake kits, right? How about, Bub, in terms of, it wasn't that long ago we were seeing, you know, 300 horsepower was the benchmark, 400 was the horsepower, and AC was an option with power windows. How does yeah, that compare to today? It's not, uh, you know, the things that used to be options back years ago are no longer options anymore. Everything, and that's what I keep, you know, mentioning on is like the standards are all fairly the same nowadays in terms of the power, the performance, the braking systems, the zero to 60 times all across their classes. You know, if you're talking about two door coupe performance cars, the Mustang, the Camaro, the Challenger, they are all in that same class, maybe within 35 horsepower of each other. Maybe they're zero to 60 times within a couple seconds yeah. of each, you know, a couple tenths of a second of each other. So all of it is all within that same class. The comps are still out there. It's just like anything in the marketplace. And how about, Bub, it's relatively inexpensive to look up or to, to make, set the, to close that gap, if you will, between the 35 horsepower uh, as, as you were saying, with small things like cold air intakes, you yeah, know very a lot easy. of that. Tunes, we hear that. When we hear people say chipping computers. So 
Chipping is kind of like an old term, okay. you know, like <laughs> early 2000s when, uh, you know, fuel injection and electronics had really kind of taken over at that point. Obviously in the 90s, um, all that stuff was around, but you start working with things like chips, right? So those are actually internal of the ECU of the car, the ECM. That's internal of it where you're actually pulling out some sort of chip that's in there or even adding to um, a company that's well known out there as Jet Performance. They typically do a lot of add-on chips where you actually insert an additional chip into something that's already there. But in today's world, again, it's all just come so easy that you can literally use, for example, a lot of like stage one, stage two power packages, which are typically basic things like cold air intake systems, um, upgraded exhaust systems, whether it's an axle back kit, just high flow mufflers, whether it's a cat back kit or a full long tube header back kit with cats, without cats, depending on where you are, what state you're in and what your preference is. You can literally just get from companies like Diablo Sport. You can literally get their in-tune handheld tuners. They look like a little iPhone. So obviously your average person knows how to use this mm -hmm. thing. You plug this into your OBD2 port and it's simple yes or no questions like is your car equipped with a cold air intake? Yes or no? And then you click which one it is and it will literally have a pre-save tune that goes right into your car for you know 500 bucks versus having to take it to have you know a custom dyno tune done at 750 or a thousand dollars for a custom pull. Yeah. Plus it's just there's so much easy stuff you can do out there in terms of getting the most bang for your buck with power packages, bolt-ons, quick easy stuff that's really all DIY, do-it-yourself stuff. Which closes that 35 horsepower gap very quickly, Easily, doesn't yeah. it? It Easily. makes it more uh, accessible to the common guy. Yeah. Bub, a couple shouts out here. We got to say good morning to Joe Kramer. He's up there. Joe Kramer in Fairfax, Virginia. How are you, my friend? Josh, we're gonna, Josh says thank you guys for starting it up. Tony Brasso, ladies and gentlemen, around the world, Tony Brasso is the owner of this car, so you'll know. Joe Kramer says, question about paint sealants and protectants, Bubster. How would you layer them from the clear coats? Or, or, or how would you layer, the, or, or I guess you're saying rec um, rank them from uh, the, the, uh, the, clear, the ceramics, waxes, uh, quick sprays, et cetera? That's a whole so, subject, isn't it? Yeah, you know, that's that's a whole subject. I mean, in today's world, I mean, again, like everything is advancing so incredibly fast. Um, as I mentioned, you know, paint qualities of today's world are incredible coming out of the gate, especially from the Ford side. Josh Brown says um, that's a good question. He's curious too, about your answer too. So, you know, and we discussed this a, a couple months back when we were actually talking about like ceramic coatings, right? Ceramic coatings, especially a company called Ceramic Pro, has taken over the industry right now and is literally making people spend millions of dollars a year in sales on sticking some lube on your car for some additional sealant, whether it's six months, a year, 10 months, whichever package you are buying, it's all about, again, what your budget is and what you feel like spending. Ceramic, does it help? Yes, 100%, it helps. It adds a hardness and a layer of protection to your actual clear coat. It doesn't change the clear coat quality if you're using PPG, if you're using Chroma Base, it doesn't matter whose brand you're using, it's all going to be an additional layer of protection on top, as well as things like Expel, which is a paint protection film, the PPF, those are all a great quality as well. It's all about what you're trying to have done and what your end goal is that you're trying to achieve. Obviously the best would be a full wet sand and polish on any sort of car before you do any of those, whether you're putting down a clear film or if you're putting down ceramic coating. And coatings, you call that, what, what's the professional term technically for that? technically paint, uh, paint correction, right? Correct. So that's when you go through and remove any perfections, swirl marks, hazing, anything that may be on that factory clear coat, right? Not in the paint or anything like that, just that clear coat. You're pulling out all of those imperfections and you're making it look like it's show quality ready. Then that's when you do the actual sealant process of whether it's a ceramic coating, whether it is an Expel clear wrap, plus you can even do ceramic coating on top of those as well if you just wanna keep dumping that money. A ceramic coating, Bob. I think maybe what we'll do next week, ladies and gentlemen, tune in. I'll bring our detailer in, Carl Thompson, Bob, who does all of our detailing and does our ceramic mm -hmm. applications. We'll set everything up, the McGee's line of waxes that we use. We'll set up ceramic, and we'll do a whole show on it for you guys next week. Bob is very, he's keeping it very encapsulated. Ceramics, uh, Josh and uh, Joe, they are very, it's very important you know what you're doing because once it's on, it's on the car. Uh, we just had a Jeep in here recently uh, they tried to apply a ceramic finish to and the paint was not done right. It splattered on the windshield, it splattered everywhere. It doesn't go away, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to know what you're doing when you're working with these ceramic products. Mike Galbraith says, I'm glad I don't live in the Ford, Chevy, or Dodge loyalty days. While I love my Camaro, I also one day want a Mustang. Bub has had all of those. <laughs> uh, Bub's had all of those cars too. Joe Kramer says ECU. Bub, what is an ECU? What does that mean? So the ECU is the uh, electronic control unit or electronic control module ECM. Um, 
essentially it's a computer, right? It's just that simple. It just depends on who's calling it what, who you are talking to. Some people get way overboard about what to call it, uh, but it is just the essential brain of all the electronics in terms of in engine management. Now, there's also additional things depending on your vehicle manufacturer. There are things like PCMs, powertrain control modules that add to the ECM. There are also BCMs, which is a body control module, like Mercedes-Benz has a lot of those. There are SAM modules. There are modules for freaking days in today's cars, and that's what I'm talking about. It is so easy to get in and alter some of those things, even ride height modules on today's like European cars, the Porsches, the Lamborghinis, the Mercedes-Benz, the Audis, anything that's electronically an air-controlled suspension. You can literally plug into these things, into their modules, and you can just adjust them down to set that stanch an inch lower if that's what you want, and throw on a big boy set of wheels, and you're done. That's crazy you retain that much knowledge. He would like to know, Bob, with newer, more capable aftermarket ECUs, or the brains, emerging on the market, comma, how easy do you think it would be to create a map for an engine without a pre-made map? Uh, You've written custom tunes. It's insane amount of time to create custom maps and uh, your best option is to always have a starting point doesn't matter who the engine builder is most guys will always have something to start with um, are they ever going to be dialed in perfect every engine is absolutely different every tune every power package everything is going to be different they can all be very close parameters will always change within small specs so to do for example like a lot of guys do you know custom engine builds right um, every engine is going to be built differently. Every rotating assembly is going to be different. Every compression ratio is going to yep. be different, depending on who's building it and what the style of the build is and what you're setting up for rods and pistons and camshaft and valve train and whether you're doing dual valve springs or whether you're doing four cams or all of it changes. And trust me, that will change just trying to get the car to start, right? So cool. that's step one. So everybody always at least has to have some sort of base tune package to go in just to get the thing turned on then you can get that thing on full dynos and do super super custom tuning and custom maps but that takes countless hours of tuning to get perfect it does bob good morning to chris bollinger uh, chris is out st louis bob miss kansas somewhere in that area yeah, somewhere there. There. somewhere chris good morning man how you doing how was everything josh brown said that's a good looking car brother congratulations on owning that beauty and tony that would be geared back to you robert simmons says greetings from the northern neck of virginia gentlemen robert simmons longtime fan of the show bob he's a big fisherman hardcore republican loves his united states of america gives me chills we are too, don't we? And Facebook keeps kicking him off because of his views. <laughs> it happens. Keep blocking the account. Just go ahead and keep changing your password. So uh, Anthony's, uh, Anthony Goodman's saying, what about epoxy coatings, Bob? We don't use a little, um, we don't use a lot of uh, uh, epoxy on, car, you know. Yeah, no, not much anymore. I mean, now we're down to, you know, between today's paint qualities and, you know, especially doing like some of our high-end Jeep builds that we do in our truck builds, our off-road stuff. We actually have one offset to the right right now. I want to see um, one. That one is actually going to, it actually is, it's already in a full custom coated and two-tone Kevlar, Kevlar coating. And that thing is an absolute animal. If you guys haven't seen it, look at the Instagram page, instagram.com forward slash Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. You'll see that thing down. It's actually a custom, like a sky blue almost, sort of. It, uh, it started off as a PPG Big Bang Blue. And then, of course, I custom tinted it from there to actually fit the theme and the exact match of the Polar Edition style from Mopar. So, Bob, Chris Bollinger wants to know, how the hell do you keep up with all this technology, man? It's all just freaking jangling around up here, man. And this guy is like, he's a wreck in the shop. So it's like, I've got all this input, input going in and I've got so much. I got to like categorize it up top and then keep it freaking on point and stay up so with everything bad. that's going on. And then he just comes through just freaking wrecking everything. All these marks on the walls. These are all cars that he's driven across the wall and stuff. So trust me, it is an absolute nightmare around here. That's why everything I keep at like a five foot distance around everywhere. He, he needs bubble wrap. Right, and Bub just put a really nice Jeep bumper together yesterday with new fog lights. Needs new fog lights, guys. George Acosta says, last how many? Five minutes. <laughs> George, George says, how many duck powers does this thing have, Bub? <laughs> So this one is uh, just at that 450 mark, right around that range. This one has not been completely dyno tuned, but just from an average install package of the JLT cold air intake, the full cap back exhaust, you get kind of proven numbers from the manufacturers on those. So you can kind of put them together and have a rough idea of where you're going to fall out. So without having this thing exactly on a rear wheel dyno, we won't know the specific numbers. Anthony Godwin would like to know, Bub, can you do an epoxy coat that would be better than Linex? We well, used typically shoot... Uh, uh, the Kevlar base because the yeah. price difference is not that much and it's impervious to pretty much everything. Yeah, right? it's, um, I mean, you, when you start getting thick into the epoxies, into the heavy coatings, those things are, <laughs> they're durable. I mean, once they're on there, you're not getting it off. I mean, even media blasting and doing, you know, a lot of like the dustless blasting, that stuff is not going to remove it. I mean, you're literally going to be down to hand chiseling each piece of that stuff off of there. You have to, you know, when you're shooting any sort of heavy coatings like that, you are actually scuffing all the way down to an 80 grit sanding yep. prep 
which is going to give that thing something incredible to bite to. And when it bites, that's it. It's there. I mean, it's you can take it and drag it across the ground. It's not going to scuff up. It might leave scratch marks, but it's not going to flake off. It's not going to chip off. Nothing. Linex would be your second go-to underneath of uh, Kevlar. Is that yeah, correct? my Raptor Kevlar that yeah, I use. That would yeah. be. It's a Raptor Kevlar that he uses there, uh, Anthony. If that answers it up a little bit, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you a physical piece of the dash that Bub has completed and uh, done the rest of the accenting. Uh, like the overflow reservoir tank bub, the fuse cover, the uh, brake master cylinder cover. Uh, I'm going to show everybody a little bit of how this looks. Right, I want well, well, you got to flip it over first because you know, for some, in about six months from now, there's going to be some douchebag that watches this. It's like a Mustang Pure. It's like, we're holding it the wrong way. That's not the headlight <laughs> switch. So hold it, it this way like so that. you can explain it to people properly and not have negative comments. I want to show everybody kind of a couple things. I left the tape on this to show how you mask things off and, and you're very meticulous with the work. But more importantly, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that the quality of what Bub brings uh, forth and it's what makes him one of the best in the world today. When you see this, you're going to see it matches. He even takes the time to match the finish on the dash product to the outside of the fender itself, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, so, so that, look. that piece was actually, um, you know, across the dash of these cars, a lot of them come with either like a spun aluminum style look, which is a more of a vintage look, or a brushed aluminum. You can even get the upgraded carbon fiber dash components as well. These pieces were in like a diagonal line brushed aluminum look, and they had a texture to them. So the client wanted to add some orange to the inside of this car. It is just a complete black interior, so we wanted to pop it with a little bit of color in there. So we actually took all of the factory parts out, sanded them all the way down. Of course, traditionally, the way you're supposed to sand and prep for paint would be with a 320 to 400 grit sandpaper. So those were all removed from every imperfection and any sort of ridges or humps or grooves that were in there from the actual factory Ford lines that were in it. We pulled all that out of there, got it down to a smooth base coat. Then we started shooting through all of our coats of paint. Again, this is a pearl paint, so it's not just shoot it with a base and a clear and be done. It is shoot it with a base of a white, then shoot it with a base of orange, then shoot it with a base of pearl, then shoot it with a base of, or a final top coat of clear. So you are literally now three, six, nine, 12 coats of paint into these parts. But let me tell you, the overall finish of them looks absolutely incredible. And you get rid of all those factory lines and grains that were in there from like that factory brush and aluminum look that was in there from Ford. And now it's just a smooth base coat, clear coat finish. It looks just like the outside of the car. I want to say good morning to Vasil over there. Bub, you remember where he's from? He's from the Ukraine. Yeah. Good morning, Vasil. How are you? How do you like this American beauty? You know, the Mustang Vasil and the Camaro Corvette, they were all part of the iconic American history. So a little bit different than over in Europe. I spent time over in Europe where you have smaller streets and want more winding roads here in South Florida. And this is a good thing we'll talk about during the ceramic edition uh, next week, Bob. Uh, here in South Florida, we do have a little bit of sand in the air and on the roads, but we have very flat, open highways. Triple digits are easily attained here, and you have to drive like you're on the Autobahn in Germany. Well, you just drive fast. I mean, naturally down here, you drive quick. And again, that's kind of where a lot of guys in this area um, especially in higher speed areas, want to know about right. paint protection films, that PPF, or having sort of ceramic coatings to protect from things like rock chips at 80, 90 miles an hour, which is average speeds in South Florida. It is average speeds because you've got, in this area above, you have the Lambos, the Ferraris, the Porsches, all the noses are very close to the pavement and they're moving down the road and excelling. Uh, you, you better not be in that left-hand lane. That's all That's I right. can say. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies man is on the set with us so bub this is just a beautiful beautiful car i think next week what we'll do is we'll we'll do a nice episode on let's do for everybody ceramic coatings versus wax how's that we can do it we'll have carl thompson our detailer come in and help us with some of the technical that's knowledge. right from hd detailing yeah absolutely bub anything else you want to tell us about this beautiful beautiful Ford Mustang. No, car. you guys just stay tuned. You'll see some serious upgrades to this car going on over the next few weeks. We have a <laughs> lot of more work to do to it, a lot more work to do to it yeah. in terms of interior upgrades. Like I mentioned, that is just a full black package from the factory. We are going to be doing a custom 270 stitch orange fury colored thread in the seats to contrast those black seats. So it's not going to be overwhelming with, you know, full on bright orange inserts. There are points where you can actually get too overwhelming in terms of two toning and color matching. This orange is very bright. So examples like the black GT side stripes on there, that does dull it down a little bit and it looks really, really tasteful and aggressive. The black roof on this car, actually factory from Ford that way, probably because Ford thought the same thing. This thing looks like a pumpkin coming down the line. We need to darken it up a little bit. <laughs> Tony Basso, the owner of this car, ladies and gentlemen, has also asked Bub to start this up and let it rip. Bub, one of the things that BEM is known for is its progressive movement in keeping things moving 
forward. Yes, there's Christy Lee out there in the market, but Bub, you've taken something and done something pretty progressive yourself. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's not often you have females in the auto industry, especially in the high horsepower arena, um, getting wild with these things. And let me tell you, we were actually uh, honored to have not only one of our own, but Scott Claypool had a great referral for us. And now we have a female on staff here at BEM. And I'll tell you what, she's in here just ripping things apart. She's trying getting to get it done. there, isn't she, Bob? That's right. It's great. You can take a piece of clay and mold her. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to introduce Did you to Did that have Kendall. anything to do with Claypool? <clears throat> Clay pool. The way you just took clay right there. I took the clay and threw it in the pool. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to introduce you to our very own Christy Lee Kendall. Kendall, please join us on set here. Come on out. Come on, Kendall, girl. How Get in are here. you doing? Everybody. How is everything? Hey, Come here. on over here and jump right between Bub and I. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Kendall. She is now part of the BEM family. Yeah. Welcome to the family. Thank you for having me. You've been here a couple of weeks now. Tell us what it's like to be here at BEM with one of the top three in the world today. It's pretty incredible working with somebody that I grew up watching on TV and watching Orange County Choppers and all right seeing on, all man. these different yeah. shows and everything and being able to actually work on the cars that you see on TV and it's actual a real family here and it's not just working on cars and showing off products but it's actual family that they welcome you into and it's it's been pretty incredible working right here. on yeah and it is it is it everything you've always thought in other words do you find a lot of vaccine drama or is it kind of a fun place to be and a quiet place to work Come on with, who's got know? the drama <laughs> he's got a little more drama than most but you know <laughs> it's it's usually quite fun around here and um if everyone has their own little work areas everyone's not really badging in on everybody else and we kind of just do our thing and get the day over with and have fun at the end of the day. No micromanagement, right? No, exactly. No micromanagement. Now is, is nice, yeah. now is it true? I mean, everybody loves Bub's personality. Everybody loves my personality, yeah. right? Bub grounds me in some ways. I ground him in some ways. But is it true? Am I really? He does not as, ground me at all, does he? Not really. Is it really? <laughs> is it true what Bub says? I mean, is it really as bad as he makes it seem? Do I really break as much stuff as he says? Yeah. Yes. I've seen a few things. Yes. <laughs> it was too, pretty funny, Bub, when that light broke yesterday. I know. <laughs> I was like at a very serious, important uh, a, a doctor's appointment, and this guy sends me pictures of broken lights that I just bought. Like yep. they weren't there at the shop for maybe 20 minutes, and they're smashed all over the floor. Like, thanks, bro. And you're like, yeah, how about that? But Robert Simmons says, I have missed, uh, I may have missed uh, a, a show, but how about a close up of the engine compartment? Absolutely, I'll do a close up for you. So we just want to, I mean, we want to welcome you with our hearts as as part of the BEM family. Kendall, it's a very big step forward for us. There's a lot of promise and hope in what you're doing. You've got a lot of drive and a lot of stamina. Tell everybody a little bit about what you'd like to see yourself doing in terms of rally car driving and things like that. Well, I eventually want to become a professional driver when it comes to drifting cars. I'm actually building my own E46 right now that I'm LS swapping, um, doing all new suspension kit on it, brake kits, um, body work, and I want to just learn paint correction, what I've been doing, helping out with the paint, learning how to build motors, um, transmission parts, uh, suspension, brakes the aerodynamics of everything to be able to actually build my own cars eventually and just go from there. It's a lot of fun, isn't yeah. it? So, you know, we, we welcome you to the family. Thank we you. sincerely welcome you. It's a big step forward for us. Mm -hmm. You've been a blessing for Thank us. You. I appreciate it. I really, really do. Welcome to the BEM family. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Kendall is in the house. You may reach her by sales at Bubba's Exotic Motorsports.com and she will respond back to any questions you may have as the female of the family, Bob. That's right. I'm going to take Bob the camera real quick. I'm going to let Bobby Simmons, uh, Simmons and the whole world see. Is everybody ready to see what this motor looks like? Because we're going to show it to him, Bob. Then right. you're going to fire this baby up, and we're going to crawl on out of here after that in just a few minutes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this episode has been brought to you by Bubba's Exotic Motorsports. That's Bubba's hey, Exotic done? Motorsports. You're not supposed to. Com. You, nope. Well, I was going to let you just fade it out as you started up the car. All right, well, I'll walk this way because normally you don't do the exit till I fade out, like it's a left or right or something. So I'm going to start. I'm walking. just going to go get the camera then. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go for the motor. Here we go. And I'm what go you'll this see, way. ladies and gentlemen, what you'll see, ladies and gentlemen, a couple things here. We're going to take you through, okay? Thank you, Kendall. If you can hold that for me so I can see what the heck it is I'm doing. Okay, there we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We are getting to this monster right here. And if you look right over there, you will see to the left my phone that I'm actually answering all of your questions with right there. So there we go. That's how I stay in touch with all of you. We'll rotate left and rotate right. Here we go. There you are. We'll walk down the side of this thing for you, ladies and gentlemen, so you can see it as well. Thank you, Kendall. Very good. Right there. We'll come back over here. 
Let me step back so I don't hit my head on this lip. There she is from the side, ladies and gentlemen, right there. Very good. Then if I turn and rotate and go like this, watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Here he comes. There he is, the ladies' man, ladies and gentlemen. B! There he is, the ladies' man, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Then we'll come over here and see Bub. And what's Bub doing? Texting. Bub's texting. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, Bub, would you stand right there and tell us what you got in the back? No, we're going to start this you. up and let it rip. There is the SEMA Jeep. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I didn't want to show you. Take care of that for you, Bubble. We'll rev it up again. Hold on one second. Let me move to the back. Another rev, please. How'd I do? Not bad for not having a camera mount in my hands, right? Here you go, Bub. I'll pass you the camera, and I'll go over and say goodbye to everybody from all of us here at BEM. Thank you, Bub, for helping me out there. Kendall, thank you for helping me out very much. Robert Simmons says, Bub, that's awesome. Josh Brown said, no, we just missed the red video. It, it glitched. I hope that got it back to you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this episode of Doing It Bubba Style. We really appreciate all of you joining us today. It was a great, great show. I certainly do appreciate it. Let's reach out to touch somebody's life in a very positive manner today, ladies and gentlemen. Let's open the doors for somebody who's got their hands full. It might be an elderly person. I've been spending a lot of time over at the VA hospital lately because it's the first time as a veteran I've ever made use of my benefits. And it's a shame to see the shape that some of those people, our former veterans, are in. So if you see them in a wheelchair, on a cane, if they're trying to get through, remember, they serve for your freedom. Open the door for them, ladies and gentlemen, would you please? Doesn't take that much. If you see somebody standing on the corner that says, we'll work for food, right there, 7-Eleven, Sitco, power bar, protein drink, it's cheaper than your designer cup of coffee. And if somebody has a, pair, a hole in a pair of shoes, I, saw, I actually saw the podiatrist the other day. You know what, man? We're all getting older and our bodies change. If somebody's got a, hip, uh, a hole in the pair, bottom of their pair of shoes, grab them a pair from yours. But next week, we're going to do detailing uh, and ceramic coatings. Make sure you join us. Uh, for next week. If you have any show topic ideas, ladies and gentlemen, we'd love to hear them at 561-410-5527. I personally answer every phone call that comes through these doors unless Kendall gets it behind me. I'll take the time to speak with you. We had a client from somewhere in the Midwest call today. He said he loves it, or the other day he said he really loves it. He can't believe that we're really there to talk to people. Indeed, we are. Sales at Bubba's Exotic Motorsports.com, ladies and gentlemen, we'll get it done as well. Tony Brasso says, so Robert Simmons says, safe weekend, uh, everyone. Tony Brasso, oh my God, I love it. You guys are the best in the business. Tony, thank you. Coming from you. Seriously, man, this is your car. You've been a Ford executive for 28 years, almost 30 years. You know quality when you see it. Wait till you see what Bub's got in store for you when you get here. Ladies and gentlemen, we love you. Till next time, let's keep on doing it Bubba style.